Okay, well, thank you all for welcoming us here. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, this has been one of the better conferences I've attended in India as it relates to intelligently using uh, digital evidence uh, to modernize and help with homeland security as well as law enforcement. So my name is Manoj Mohan. I'm the country head of Axon here in India, and I wanted to introduce as well our local representative based in Delhi, Navreet, uh, who also represents Axon, here to help you with any of your questions after this uh, presentation as well. You want to say a few words, Navreet? Well, Axon is one of the leading uh, body-worn cameras and digital evidence management systems available in the world, and uh, we're, uh, our system is being used by 6,000 law enforcement agencies. So that says about our cre credibility, and Manoj will give all details, and if anyone has questions, I'm here. Of course, at a technical presentation, we're having technical difficulties, so just give us one minute and we should have this ready for you. But before we uh, jump into the presentation, by a show of hands, how many of you are technologists by background or in the technology sector today? Okay, and then how many of you are law enforcement, homeland security, military, or some derivation of? Okay, so we have a fair mix of both. Uh, so before I get started, I'd like to tell a little story. I left from a technology background based in New York City and came to Axon because Axon's mission was to do something that I truly believed was very important for society, and that was to protect life. Protect life of officers, protect life of the communities that they serve. And so about three and a half years ago, I made the transition to Axon. And the first thing that I did was I actually got to ride along with a police officer in New York City to see what their day-to-day -day life was like. And the first thing I realized was that coming from a technology background and moving into a law enforcement type of arena, I had to take a couple steps back. I had to take a couple steps back in the way that, you know, I delivered the way I communicated. Uh, I had to take a couple steps back in terms of approach technology for law enforcement. Law enforcement works a bit differently than technologists do. And understanding that cultural gap was really critical for Axon 20 years ago when we first started. Uh, to become successful and to really support law enforcement in a way where our products were usable, not only at the top sophisticated lines of law enforcement, but all the way to the law enforcement officer you see on a day-to-day -day basis. So, uh, let's see. are we up? We're up. We're up and we're not up. Uh, let's see. We can throw this on the, hang on. Okay, so let's not talk about the presentation. We'll do something a little bit different. Sorry again. We can put this on the uh, Windows laptop there. Yeah. Is that possible? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, we don't have a presentation right now, that's okay. We'll talk a little bit about what we do at Axon and what we've learned over the last 20 years of supporting law enforcement across the world. We originally started with non-lethal weapons. You may know us from our previous name, which is Taser International. Since then, we've moved on to become the leaders in the body-worn camera market. And one of the quick things that we realized with things like body-worn camera was the sheer amount of data that they start to generate over time. I'll give you an example. An average officer today records about five videos per day at full HD resolution. Now multiply that by the number of officers that are on the streets in India today. And you start to understand the petabytes of data that start to get generated through a simple capture device like a body-worn camera. Now beyond that, Let's talk about interview rooms, surveillance TV. Yeah. Interview rooms, surveillance cameras, CCTVs, in-car cameras, and you can see the volume of data that starts to generate is just becoming overwhelming for most law enforcement agencies to handle on their own in-house data centers. Beyond that, securing the data, having disaster recovery policies in place. These are generally not areas where law enforcement agencies have specific expertise. And that's where companies like Axon come into play to help assist law enforcement with those challenges as we get more into the digital world of policing. So, do we have a presentation? Yeah. We do? Okay. We got it, all right. So, we can go to the next slide. Next slide, Let's see if Okay, so let's talk about something very simple. The basics of a body-worn camera program. So one thing that Axon understands very, very well is what is the day-to-day -day life of an officer who supports you as a community in the field look like? What does it look like from leaving the office in the morning to coming out on patrol, to going back to the office to file reports? How much paperwork are they doing? 
what does their day-to-day -day really look like? And do we design technologies to fit into that day-to-day -day process? Or rather, are we developing technologies that are requiring steep learning curves? Are we developing technologies that require them to fundamentally change the way that they do business on a day-to-day -day level? We realized very quickly that going the opposite route of trying to build very sophisticated technology that makes them change their day-to-day -day process is not being a good partner for law enforcement. In fact, it's doing the exact opposite. And as we know from you know, past experiences, the easiest way to help law enforcement is to support their day-to-day -day efforts. They're experts in maintaining law and order. We're experts in technology. We need to find the mix between the two that has the least amount of friction. So we go to the next slide. So I hope this video works. If you can try to play that in a breathe. Can I just play it from the... Can I play it from here? Can you play it from there? Yeah, you can Which try one? The first uh, one? No, it's going to be the policing for the future. <laughs> Hopefully we have this video pop up. And we have audio. Sorry, one second. This is a great video. This talks officers. about deployment. Axon Public Safety UK, part of Taser International, supplies the body cams and management software that allow officers to capture, store, manage, retrieve and share digital evidence. Katie Haswell reports. Major UK cities, including London, Manchester and Birmingham, are rolling out 30,000 body-worn video cameras to their frontline police officers. Axon Public Safety UK, part of Taser International, supplies the body cams and management software that allow officers to capture, store, manage, retrieve and share digital evidence. Katie Haswell reports. Okay, driver, step out of the vehicle, your hands clearly on show. Firearms officers confront a suspect using technology that is the future of law enforcement. I'm transitioning to taser. Body-worn video, proving a vital tool in almost every field of modern policing, from firearms to the beat. In 2015, 1,000 officers in London wore Axon Public Safety's body-worn video cameras for 12 months. It was the world's largest trial of its kind, led by the Mayor's Office of Policing and Crime and the College of Policing. The results showed a 33% reduction in complaints against officers, with no effect on the number of stop and searches. This is taxpayers' money, and so it's really important that we had an extensive procurement process. And we feel that Axon Taser has demonstrated the best value for money for us, but just as importantly for the operational officer, it provides a product that has worked every time. The hardware, the camera, is extremely user-friendly, it's robust, it's ideal for policing, and the battery life lasts for an operational tour. Firearms units also conducted a separate trial using the head-mounted camera Axon Flex, worn by 450 officers across the London Met, Staffordshire and Wales Triforce. The trial proved a success. The National Police Chiefs Council decided to roll out the technology into overt armed policing as soon as is practical. During the course of the trials there were several intentional shootings. Um, the footage proved to be extremely valuable in the post-incident um, procedure in supporting the officers and their accounts. The cameras have to be uh, adjustable so that they're pointing in the right direction because officers take aim in different ways so um, that we need to be able to adjust the camera. And also critical is the battery life as well because it has to last for at least an eight hour tour of duty. And it just so happened that Axon ticked all those boxes. So a number of significant forces have decided to partner with Axon. Body worn video is not just about the hardware. Everything a suspect says can be used in evidence as we well know. And this evidence is irrefutable from capturing the footage to sharing it in the courtroom. The footage comes into its own when officers transfer, manage, retrieve and share the digital evidence. Officer Smith is now using Axon's cloud-based digital management system, Evidence.com. She simply docks the camera, which automatically uploads and stores the footage. She can manage the data with search and retrieval features, and then collaborate with other forces and prosecutors by sharing the evidence digitally. This means officers no longer waste time burning and transporting disks, 
which can also be misplaced. For us it's flexible, it's secure, we can uh, easily share with third parties and also we have a plan to uh, have the public bring their footage and bring their evidence into that cloud storage as well. So it provides a, a medium for all our digital evidence repository. So for us it was uh, it's a much more flexible system and, uh, and a pay-as-you-go, if you like, type of storage, which is something we were keen to explore. Already, the number of UK officers wearing Axon's body cameras has grown from 150 towards the end of 2015 to an expected 30,000 by the end of 2016. So what of the future? Going forward, the technology is going to evolve um, because of the power of the cloud, the fact that we can develop the application and, and roll out improvements to that application literally overnight. Um, and what it's allowing us to do is then plug in other technology into that cloud-based platform to do things like um, voice to uh, text transcription, um, like live streaming, and provide tools that we can put in the hands of the officers on the street that will allow them to do their jobs better and actually do what they join the force to do, to be a police officer out on the street, not sat in the office doing paperwork. Okay, so that gives you an idea of how we work, and we work with the line officer, trying to make their jobs easier. Now, how many of you in this room have one of these? I would say every single one of you have one of these, correct? Let's say I wiped every single app off of every single one of your phones. How useful would the hardware be? It's, it's useless, right? It's non-intelligent without the software that makes this function. In the same way, we have come a long way to helping law enforcement understand that hardware alone is no longer the way to provide better levels of policing and law enforcement. Beyond this simple device lies an intricate network of apps connected to the cloud that allows this data to be managed in a way that makes sense for law enforcement from a security, usability, and ultimately evidence collection and management perspective. And that's what really differentiates body-worn camera programs. You can see that most people would think of a body camera and say, let's just buy some GoPros or some you know, local piece of hardware, strap it on our law enforcement officers, send them out on the street, and call it a day. We tried that eight years ago, and we failed very, very quickly. And we started realizing that the key to these types of programs is not the hardware. That's one aspect of it. But ultimately, looking beneath the surface and understanding the software that makes this hardware intelligent is really critical for law enforcement to start to understand. So this simple slide gives you an idea. Law enforcement is moving from a paper-based management system to a digital-based management system. How do we manage the petabytes of data that the UK Metropolitan Police is generating on a yearly basis on these? We're not doing it with paper, and they know that they can't do that, and that's not a sustainable way to do business. Uh, so moving forward, we'll talk a little bit about how the cloud is starting to help us optimize and become more effective in the management and workflow of data. So this is another video. Can we go to the, uh... sorry about that. Should be there. And it is, no, it is the, um, sorry, White Cloud, yeah. One of the major challenges was keeping up with the rise in public expectation, the level of storage was required on ageing legacy systems. We just couldn't keep up. I don't think we were cloud sceptic as such. I think we were cloud nervous. And one of the key decisions we had to make as a police service was are there people who can do this type of work more effectively and more cost effectively? And the answer was yes. Digital policing isn't just about doing the same thing that we did in the office on a computer. It's about streamlining, it's about making our office more effective, it's about improving workflow. But ultimately, it's about ensuring we deliver an effective crime-fighting service to the community of London. I would ask police services to think and to look at the issues. For us, the opportunity to work with a large supplier like Axon and Microsoft Azure, based in the UK, allowed us that level of confidence that we needed. 
we're now storing the data from approximately 22,000 body-worn video cameras. That's really significant. We've engaged a large organisation that's businesses' data security. One immediate benefit that we've seen from using the cloud is we understand what we're spending on data and we know come the end of the financial year how much we've spent. We are the first police service in the UK that shares its data via the cloud with the Crown Prosecution Service. We no longer burn to disk, we no longer send them lengthy documents and we have that guarantee of security and that increase in efficiency by electronic transfer. I think that any police service that isn't currently on the cloud really needs to have a good look and examine why they're not. It's about freeing up officers to put them back on the street where the public want them. If we had to go back and revisit the decision to use the cloud, I think the one thing I'd say is, why didn't we do it earlier? Great, so it gives you an idea well, Let's say you're a mid-sized agency. Oh an idea as to how the cloud is enabling police agencies to do their jobs more effectively for the job that they are meant to do, which is protecting civilians, communities, and so forth. We don't want our police officers sitting behind desks doing paperwork and moving those things, you know, shuffling paper here and there. We want to take that time, give it back to them, and automate those processes. So at the ground level, the day-to-day -day of an officer is more about policing their communities versus doing paperwork. So 10 years ago, when we first started up, not a single police agency said that they would be willing to go to the cloud. Today, we have over 6,000 agencies all being managed in the cloud, putting in their digital evidence that is obviously very, very sensitive data, uh, and they're able to trust some of the things that we do that are above and beyond what they can do in their own data centers. So just a quick note on security as to how we approach it. Rolling out body cameras. 200 officers could easily generate over 3,000 individual evidence files per week. That's a lot of data stacking up. And who can best handle that data? Axon can. You're thinking, why would I trust a vendor with my agency's most sensitive info? We get that question a lot. And here's our answer. Because our information security program is the best in the industry and stronger than what you could do yourself. See, you could go with a different third-party provider, but they might not offer a full security program or meet compliance standards beyond just piggybacking off their storage vendor. Or you could go with your only IT guy who already oversees 15 to 20 different applications. What happens when a hacker tries to get in? It could quickly overwhelm your internal resources or test the limits of another vendor's expertise. Compare that to Axon, where our team is stacked with security veterans constantly monitoring for suspicious activity, plus looking for weaknesses and future threats. Our products give us an edge too, because they're built with security in mind from the ground up. And the day-to-day -day stuff we do to keep our program ironclad, also industry leading. Every Axon employee gets regular security training, and we meet or exceed the highest industry standards like CGIS, ISO, and Cloud Security Alliance through our full technology stack from data storage to evidence.com itself. Want another opinion? Ask any of the agencies who already trust the Axon network. They're stacking up. So it gives you an idea. What we're trying to do to, to provide police and law enforcement as well as militaristic agencies is a partnership that allows them to trust us to handle their most sensitive data coming from some of their most sensitive products. And we do that in a variety of ways. One, we secure the hardware. Two, we secure the transmission of any evidence coming from this piece of hardware to its ultimate storage location, whether that's on your premise or in the cloud. Uh, and then in the cloud, we don't just rely on our cloud partner's security, which is Microsoft Azure. We actually have a security team in-house at Axon that continuously tries to look for hacks, they do penetration testing, audits, and so forth. So we understand that evidence is so critical to policing that we understand that the security levels that we need to provide are above and beyond what any other normal vendor would provide. So getting back to workflow, we talked about how the cloud optimizes workflow. So let's talk about what that means. When you have something as simple as a body-worn camera, or call it an in-car camera, or an interview room that you've uh, recorded, and there was a, you know, a confession that you needed, beyond just this piece of hardware, what needs to happen to that piece of evidence before it's actually usable? Well, that evidence needs to be annotated. There needs to be some data associated to it, whether that's you know, a note that was put in by the police officer or it could just be simple things like the day and time that it was taken. It needs to be transferred to a storage location and secured as it transfers to ensure that there's no breach 
and there's no change of the data from the device to ultimately where that storage location lies. Ultimately, it needs to be stored in some place for a certain amount of time, depending on the sensitivity of that data. Uh, and then from that perspective, how do you use it? You need an application somehow to connect to that storage facility, to use that information in a way that makes sense. You need to build cases. In some cases, if it's a sensitive piece of data and you need to protect an identity, you may need to blur out a face or redact it. Uh, and then ultimately, you may need to transcribe the audio into text for a case purpose. All of these things are enabled by the power of the cloud, and it's enabled to be done over huge scale. In India in particular, when we have police agencies that are employing tens of thousands of officers on the street, the simple hardware alone does not suffice to make a great program. You need to think about scalability. How will this work at 100 cameras? How will this work at 10,000? How will this work at 100,000 in some cases? And understand the solution at whole and look beneath just the tip of the iceberg. Next slide. And next one. So if we can eliminate paperwork through devices like this and software that would help manage this process, we believe that we can triple the amount of time that officers spend on the street. Globally, there is a shortage of law enforcement officers. We know that exists in India as well. So if we can reallocate their efforts to what they're meant to do by eliminating some of the burdensome tasks, I think we'll all have safer and more protected communities. Here's an example of some of the uh, agencies that you saw, London Metropolitan Police Department. Not only do they have the Axon hardware, they have the software as well as using storage through our partner with Microsoft Azure. They have 22,000 cameras deployed. They went from an initial trial of 1,000 and scaled up very, very quickly. We got that deployment done in, honestly, less than one month. Uh, if you think about that in terms of how you would deploy 22,000 cameras in a one-month period, the only way we were able to do that is through the cloud. There's some examples of some of the results that they've seen after their deployment of body-worn cameras. A great one has been a reduction of complaints against officers. Oftentimes, officers do not want things like cameras because they... Queensland is another example. In Australia, they have a 5,000 case deployment. Uh, a lot of this related to domestic violence. Queensland in Australia has a domestic violence uh, problem. So when officers are called on the scene with a domestic violence case, the camera quickly gains confessions. So it slows down the whole judicial process uh, with the he said, she said of opinions. And it's more uh, factual based on the video and what it shows. Thank you. The next bit I wanted to talk to you a little bit about are some of the supplemental services that the cloud would help facilitate law enforcement with. One of the things that we spoke about earlier in the conference is citizens being enabled to provide police data to help become more intelligent, investigate, and eventually arrest maybe dangerous individuals. The Axon Citizen Portal allows any civilian sitting here with a smartphone to download a free app, immediately start generating data on their phones via pictures, texts, or videos, and securely sending that to your local police department. On the back end, our cloud-based system, evidence.com, will aggregate that data, analyze that data, and determine if there's further action that needs to happen. So if you're a civilian and you're hanging out with friends and you see a riot or a fight starting to break out, you can quickly alert police departments who may not be on scene that something suspicious is happening and we would love some additional support. Go ahead. So beyond that, some of the products and services that are outside of the Axon ecosystem, including CCTVs and so forth, can all be managed within this system, evidence.com. So in essence, what we're trying to do is eliminate the data silos that officers need to go through to build a full story or to build a case around any particular event. So if you have data on a CCTV, you have three officers that had body cameras. Oh, by the way, there was a few people that had in-car cameras that were surveilling the scene as well. We can take all that data, put it into one secure storage location, and then start analyzing that data to give you more insights. So in essence, the message that I uh, wanted to leave you all with is that when looking at these types of pieces of hardware, it's critical for law enforcement to start to understand that what, be what uh, lies beneath the hardware is equally, if not more important than the hardware itself. So look at the network at whole, look at the solution at whole, understand if it scales within your agency, understand if it works within your workflow, if it's flexible or rigid, uh, and make your decisions on things like body-worn cameras based on that information. Here's some of the general uh, things that agencies have seen. They have seen a reduction in the use of force from the um, adoption of body-worn cameras, reduction of complaints, of course, increase in guilty pleas that are early, and then the reduction of paperwork bringing officers back onto the streets. 
So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me or Navreet. I can answer any questions now that you may have. Otherwise, we have a booth in the back as well. Are there any questions? Thoughts? Yes, sir. I'm sorry? It's a great question. So we do have plans to eventually manufacture in India and take advantage of Make in India. However, we do need to generate a little bit of demand. And we opened our offices in India just eight months ago. So if the market welcomes us here in India, we would absolutely love to take advantage of the Make in India program. Yeah. Thank you. Okay.